Welcome, Ben Mama. This video is brought to you by A Compendium of Atari 8-Bit Games Volume 1 by Kieran Hawken and AG Books. This full colour book features over 250 game reviews, developer interviews, fun facts and trivia, personal stories and is the ultimate companion to Atari's groundbreaking 8-bit computer range. It is available in both hardback and paperback and can be purchased worldwide from all leading bookstores including Amazon, WH Smiths, Waterstones, Barnes & Noble and Wordery. So what are you waiting for? Get your copy today! Now I know what you're probably thinking. Surely the XE game system doesn't even have 10 exclusives, right? Well, yes, technically you are correct. So to cover this console, I got a bit creative with the criteria. I'm sure that everyone watching this is more than aware that the XE game system is just a small part of the best-selling Atari 8-bit computer range. If you don't and want to find out more about this quirky hybrid system, then I suggest watching the amazing facts video I did on the ZX a few weeks back. Link in the top corner as always. I'm sure you'll also be aware that there's an absolutely huge range of games for the Atari 8-bit too, when you factor in tape, disc and cartridge releases. But let's focus on the latter of those, because the ZX in its most basic form can only play cartridge games. So with this list of amazing exclusives, I'm only including games that number one came on cartridge and number two could be played on the XE game system. That second point is actually quite important, because some of the early games that were aimed at 400 and 800 computers aren't compatible with XE machines. Doing the video this way also means that I can return to the Atari 8-bit range of computers separately to cover some amazing disc and tape games. Now that's all explained, I should probably just get on with it and show you 10 amazing games that are exclusive to the Atari XE game system. Introducing the new Atari XE video game system, the only game system that teaches you to fly. It comes with Flight Simulator 2 and a keyboard to play many advanced computer games. But that's not all. You can pilot your Atari through hundreds of other exciting games because it also comes with a target gun and the great game Bug Hunt. And it plays the most challenging joystick games like Missile Command. The new Atari XE video game system, the only one that has it all. This strategy war game was created by the legendary Chris Crawford and originally published through the Atari Program Exchange, aka APX, way back in 1981. However, Eastern Front soon became one of the APX's best-selling games of all time, selling over 60,000 copies. It was also widely acclaimed in the press of the time, winning Creative Computing's coveted Game of the Year award in 1981 and was subsequently chosen by Atari for release on Cartridge 2. Recreating the famous Eastern Front during World War II, this game covers the area of operations from 1941 to 1942. You command the German forces as they invade the Soviet Union whilst fighting the computer-controlled Russians. The game simulates terrain, weather, supplies, unit morale and fatigue among other minor features, making it incredibly advanced for the time. Only a small portion of the map can be seen at any one time, so you need to keep on scrolling around in order to keep everything under control. Eastern Front also uses a combination of both the joystick and keyboard to perform the various actions needed. The computer AI is very advanced for the time and thinking is very quick, meaning it's not as ponderous as you might expect. The character-based graphics and sound are both fairly rudimentary but fulfil their objective well enough. Overall, Eastern Front is a surprisingly good strategy sim for the time. Despite appearing to be 100% complete, this game was never actually released by Atari, despite being advertised. Nobody is really sure why, myself included, as this is in fact a very slick poker simulator, 
especially for the time period. Thankfully a prototype cartridge of the game was found and dumped meaning we can now all enjoy it. The first thing I noticed about Vegas Poker is that the graphics are all drawn in the Atari's high resolution mode but appear in multiple colours. What is this witchcraft? It's a shame the game's programmer didn't share this trick with other people back then. It also features some very impressive audio too, with both multi-voice music and sound effects. Does it actually play a good game of poker though I hear you ask? Yes, it most certainly does, and I particularly like the way the display works too. You start with $20 and different amounts of money are awarded for different hands with a grand jackpot of $1000 for a royal flush. I also discovered that there are a few clever little cheats for this game for those who don't want to play fairly. This is another nice touch that you don't really see in similar games around this time. Ok, Vegas Poker isn't the most exciting game in the world and it certainly doesn't have as many options as many similar games of this type, but there's still plenty of enjoyment to be had here and you can't fail to be impressed by the execution of the overall product. If you bought the deluxe bundle of the XG game system back in the day, then you would have not only got an Atari XG1 light gun in the box, but also a game to use it with in the form of Bug Hunt. One of the most interesting things about this fairly rudimentary shooter is who created it and vastly experienced Atari stalwarts Alan Murphy and Rob Dibble, with the latter having also programmed such legendary titles as Warbirds on the Lynx, Hover Strike on the Jaguar and Star Raiders on the Atari ST. The plot here is some ludicrous story about your computer circuit being affected with real bugs that you have to eliminate before they ruin your project. I found this quite amusing and it's nice to see that Atari made some attempt to create a backstory to such a relatively simple game. As the different bugs crawl onto the screen you need to take them out with the light gun. These nasty critters don't really do you any harm though, the object here is to keep your accuracy as high as possible. If your shooting isn't up to the required standard when the level is done then it's game over. So you can't just fire at the screen aimlessly and need to make sure you don't lose focus. Graphically they went for this monochromatic green look that actually works quite well and the sound effects are exactly what you'd expect from a game like this. Ok, so Bug Hunt is nothing groundbreaking but it's still a pretty fun blast em up. This single screen platform game from Quickshot joystick manufacturer Spectra Video is fairly reminiscent of some other classic platformers such as Load Runner, Minor 2049er and Chucky Egg. The plot explains that there has been an earthquake that damaged the town's bank vault and all the money has fallen into some underground caverns. So the bank has hired you, as a well known raider, to head down below and recover the cash. You will see dollar signs dotted around the screen to represent the lost money and the bank at the top of the screen. By traversing a set of ladders and platforms you can collect the money and return it to the bank. But there are a number of rather nasty creatures in these caves that will eat you for lunch, so you need to do your best to avoid them. There are two ways you can complete your task, grab each piece of money and return it to the bank, or try to collect it all in one go, at which point it's returned automatically. This adds a really nice risk and reward nature to the game. Once all the money is collected, a load more appears, so it's the same again only with more dangerous enemies. The visuals are fairly simple but are nice and colourful and the audio is reasonable enough too. I found Goldmine to be a pretty generic platformer but also a fairly fun one that you no doubt return to from time to time.
This is without doubt the best game, Ed, father of the Xbox Freeze, created for the Atari 8-bit. In Sea Chase you control a submarine, who is trying to take out the warship roaming on the waves above. This might sound easy, but the ocean depths are full of mines, laid out in a grid pattern, and your craft only has limited fuel. You're also missing the weaponry required to take out the giant metal behemoth. By collecting the fuel pods when they appear, you are eventually awarded with a missile, and this is used to destroy the ship and make it to the next stage. Just to make things a little tougher, you only get one shot. The ship is constantly moving, so you have to time it perfectly too. And did I also forget to mention that the enemy boat is constantly dropping death charges in your direction. One hit from the enemy, running out of fuel, or crashing into a mine, causes you to lose a life, whilst failing to hit the boat with your torpedo means you have to replay the level. As the game goes on, the ship gets faster, the fuel drains quicker, and the enemy fire rains down harder. Graphically, the game is fairly simple, but does the job more than adequately, and the same can be said of the sound too. See, Chase is all about the gameplay though, the tight controls, the sense of urgency, and the addictiveness make this the perfect arcade style game, and one that will keep you coming back again and again. Now everyone knows about the E.T. game for the Atari 2600, and the multitude of legends, myths and interesting stories behind it. But everyone seems to forget that Atari also produced an alternative E.T. game for their 8-bit computers. Like its more famous sibling, this one is also a top-down arcade adventure for the most part, but somewhat more advanced and split into two parts. In the first section you play as Elliot searching the town for pieces of the ship needed to get his alien friend home. In this part you are able to communicate with E.T. telepathically to get his help, which is quite a nice touch. As well as negotiating the map you have to watch out for the government agents trying to stop you and do your best to avoid them. Once you've grabbed all the ship parts you'll hear Elliot shout out E.T. phone home, which is quite a surprise, and then you'll switch characters. Once you've taken the role of the extraterrestrial you have to try and negotiate your maze like forest to find the landing site of your ship. Once there you can complete your mission and with it the game itself. Graphically the game is quite nice and the sound is pretty good too, especially the digitised speech. With no less than 9 difficulty levels on offer, E.T. Phone Home is a game that can be enjoyed equally by adults and young children. Stay faithful to the source material and is much better than its VCS brethren. One of the most acclaimed titles ever released for the rival Commodore 64 was Houston Consultant's wonderful horizontally scrolling shoot em up Iridium. It brought a really fresh new look to the then quiet charge genre by flipping the action on its head, literally. The overhead view of Iridium became its trademark and it wasn't long before claims of the game started to appear all over the place. Sadly, the Atari 8 bits never got an official port of Iridium, so its owners had to make do with tributes such as Mirax Force, Astromeda, Fandium, and Atari's own effort, Thunderfox. This game plays exactly the same as its more illustrious muse, with you flying over a series of space stations trying to destroy both ground and air based targets. Once you destroy all the enemy forces, then you move into the next level for more of the same, only harder. Like Iridium, Thunderfox scrolls in both directions, so you're constantly switching from scrolling right to scrolling left, which can become a little disorientating. 
One unique feature here though is the boss stages. We have to carefully negotiate a screen full of traps in order to face the mothership. Graphically the game is pretty good with both fast and smooth scrolling as well as an excellent choice of colours. There's a great title track from Oral Cornelius and nice effects too. This is definitely one of the better Iridium clones out there. Caverns of Mars is a very early arcade style game for the Atari 8-bit computers, but don't let its age and fairly crude graphics put you off, as this game really is very enjoyable indeed. This title can best be described as a vertically scrolling version of Konami's classic Scramble. The idea of the game is pretty much identical, as you must guide a spaceship through a series of tight caverns, try not to smash into the sides and run out of fuel. Missiles launch at you from the silos below and enemy craft try to shoot you down. Also the same as Scramble is the way you must shoot the fuel tanks to replenish your own supply. The one slight difference here is that instead of being armed with bombs and missiles like Scramble, in Caverns of Mars you just have guns that fire from each wing. This means you have to line up the sides of your ship perfectly to shoot stuff, otherwise it can slip in between and take you out. Once you get to the bottom of each cavern, you must lay the explosives and then escape before they blow up and trap you under a pile of rubble. As I already alluded to, this is not a particularly pretty game. Whilst colourful, it is very blocky and fairly simplistic. There is some pretty decent sound though, with the A8's trademark noisy sound effects on full bore. Caverns of Mars is a highly enjoyable arcade experience that offers a good challenge and an almost perfect learning curve. Most of the light gun games for the Atari XE are pretty unoriginal stuff like the Duck Hunt inspired Barnyard Blaster and Operation Wolf clone Operation Blood, but in Crime Buster we have a genuinely original and quite innovative title. You start off by selecting a one or two player game as you view some mugshots on the wall. Then you are presented with a map of the city that you are trying to free from a gang of mobsters. There are a total of 12 locations here and any of them can be selected from the start. Once selected you actually have to drive to the destination, and I'm sure that you're all wondering how the hell you can drive in a light gun game. Well, you're actually not. The police car drives itself, but you have to protect it by shooting any criminals who try to ram it off the road. But watch out for the civilians, because shooting one of them off the road by mistake results in a severe penalty to your ammo reserves. And if that runs out, it's game over. Then once you get to the chosen destination, you are presented with a more traditional shooting gallery type level, where criminals pop up from behind the scenery and you need to take them out as quickly as possible whilst making sure you don't shoot innocent people. Graphically, Crime Buster is excellent and the audio is pretty good too. Overall, this is a great gun shooter that should be considered an essential for any XG1 owner.
one of the things I really love about the Atari 8-bit range is that it has loads of games that don't directly rip others off, but borrow some of the best elements and then use them to make a new game. This is especially true when it comes to shoot 'em ups, and the very rare Starion by Romox is a great example of that. The game borrows quite heavily from both Vanguard and Scramble, but it's different enough to get away with it. You control a flying saucer, soaring across an alien planet, armed with lethal laser turrets. In order to escape, you must negotiate the tight caverns, rocky outcrops, and take out the enemy installation. Along the way, you must also keep your ship fueled, as this is done the same way as Konami Scramble, by blowing up the fuel tanks. Because of the way the levels are designed, with lasers that fire intermittently, far greater time is involved here than the other two games I mentioned. Certain parts also have only one route through. This is not a game you'll complete on your first go. The best routes will need to be memorised. Starion has incredibly bright and colourful visuals, perhaps a bit on the gaudy side at times, but then again many A8 games are criticised for having graphics that are too dark. The sound is decent enough, but nothing to write home about. Overall, Starion is a fun and challenging shooter that will probably catch more than a few people by surprise. This is the Nintendo Video Game System. It plays only cartridge games. This is the new Atari XE System. It plays cartridge and disc-based games. Disc drives sold separately, and only Atari comes with a real joystick. Both have guns, but only Atari comes with a target game, Bug Hunt. Nintendo has a toy robot, but only Atari gives you a keyboard for playing advanced computer games. It even comes with the amazing Flight Simulator 2 cartridge. The new Atari XE Video Game System. Unbeatable. And that rounds up my look at 10 amazing exclusives for the Atari 8-bit game system. Can you think of any other cartridge-based exclusives for the Atari 8-bit range that should have made the list? Or do you think some of these games were unworthy of inclusion? I always love to hear the thoughts and views of my audience, so please get typing in that comments section. Before I go though, I must thank all of my loyal patrons for continuing to support my channel and make videos like this possible. However, I must give special thanks to the following patrons in particular for their much appreciated pledges. Mitchell Valentino, Neptune, Seth A. Robinson, Carl Olsen, Dos Gamerman, Tiago Piero Dos Santos Silva, and Electron Star Collapse. If you also want to help support all my creative endeavours, including this YouTube channel, then please go and check out my Patreon right now. You can get access to a host of extra content, including downloads, exclusive videos, creative insights, and much more besides. I've been the Laird, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again for another video very soon.